Does Clemson have an ace up their sleeve in their legal fight against the ACC? You are Locked On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Shout out to the everydayers for making Locked On ACC your first listen and your first watch today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. He's Kenton Gibbs from Locked On Wolfpack. I am Alex Dono from Locked On Canes. On this episode, we will talk about uh, ACC baseball teams advancing to the Super Regionals, but it's all about the legal drama. <laughs> Another Law and Order ACC edition. Uh, did UNC actually lawyer up before Florida State and Clemson, even though UNC is not suing the ACC, at least not yet? But uh, there have been some updates, Kenton, over the past few days on Clemson's lawsuit against the ACC. Uh, in fact, Clemson has, uh, this is per the Post and Courier, Clemson filed a motion last week, late last week, to potentially speed up its court case against the Atlantic Coast Conference in a motion for summary judgment entered on May 30th in Pickens County. Clemson's lawyers asked the court to set a hearing on or before July 12th. The university is asking for a declaration that the ACC only owns its broadcast rights for games played while the Tigers are in the ACC, and that granting the league Clemson's rights for the entirety of the ESPN deal, which could run until 2036, is not, quote-unquote, necessary for the ACC to fulfill its obligations in the contract. And the funny thing about this, Kenton, is the general public, uh, the version of the ESPN contract with the ACC that regular people who are you know not involved in the courts, the version that we have, are full of redactions. So we, we don't right. really know the meat and potatoes of what is in that ESPN ACC contract, but you have Clemson on one side who apparently feels like there's a smoking gun in there that could get them summary judgment to declare once you leave the conference, ESPN, the ACC, they can't keep your TV rights, whereas the ACC clearly feels like the opposite is true, that if someone leaves our conference, your TV rights are still locked in with us until 2036. Yeah, and this is this is one of those moments that is going to be, and this is not, no pun intended here, but this is going to be a seminal moment in this case. This is going to be a moment that people look back at and say definitively this leaned it one way or the other, because if there is not a smoking gun, this is not just a moment of a potential smoking gun for Clemson. This is a potential huge domino for all of the conferences that are um, aligned with ESPN. Why do I say that, right? Let's say that the Big Ten's, uh, somehow the Big Ten's revenue outpaces the SEC's by a good margin in the near future. Who knows how that could happen? Let's just say it does happen. What I have heard from everybody close to the situation is that, the, is that all of the deals with ESPN were done in a copy-paste fashion. The only difference is the number amounts. So the, ES, so the deals with ESPN include the following conferences, the SEC, the ACC, and the Big 12 to some extent, but they don't have like full um, leeway over the Big 12. So the reality of this is if this deal is bad, if, this, if there is something in here that there is a smoking gun like Clemson says, I don't know the validity of that. I don't know the validity of the whole copy and paste deal either. But what I do know is that both of those things are, in fact, true. At that point in time, it pretty much gives free reign for any team to leave any conference at any moment, unless there was to be a reworking of those deals, especially for those who are who are aligned with ESPN. So that's a major moment, not just for Clemson, not just for Florida State, but for all of college football as we know it. It would be a moment that sends shockwaves that are massive. Wow. Well, it could, so, be, could be. Seriously, because uh, it, it's a huge difference. Like for anyone who's trying to leave the ACC, you know, the idea of, and it would still be expensive to leave the conference, right? Whether you can take your TV rights with you or not, um, you know, we're talking about potentially 140 or maybe a couple of million under that, but about $140 million 
buyout just to leave the conference under mm. normal circumstances. I'm sure that Clemson, Florida State, they would try to negotiate a lower number, but we're talking about about, about 140 million to leave the conference. But then you're potentially, if you can't take your TV rights, then you're you know it's really more north of 500 million, which is probably cost prohibitive for anyone to get out of that deal. So it makes you're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars here that are at stake. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. Uh, a, a big advantage that Florida State and Clemson have is that they can cheat off each other's notes, right? That when when Clemson presented some additional arguments against the ACC, Florida State was able to maybe adapt part of Clemson's legal approach to their own. Remember when they had to make that amended argument uh, in the Florida courts, they were able to Absolutely. make a little bit of Clemson's homework on that. Whereas you know the ACC doesn't really, they don't really have that luxury, right? Where they just have to kind of work their own strategy. They don't have anybody else's paper to cheat off of. So that could be a big advantage for both Clemson and Florida State in the fact that they can, I'll use the word, I don't mean this as, as an illegal thing, but they can essentially collude with one another legally. Yeah, and, and it, of course it's informal collusion where it's like, oh, this is how it worked out for them. Okay, we're not going to try that strategy, but we'll try this one instead. Or, oh, this is what they reworked. And and you're absolutely right there in that you know it's a it's it's a little bit of a situation where you're battling on multiple fronts and and many more um, variables could go wrong for you as the ACC. But if I'm the ACC, I like this gambit that that Clemson is going for, and that hey, we believe that there is prohibitively nothing there that stops us from leaving and, and taking our rights with us. Well, great. If I'm the ACC, I'm like good. Because allegedly, the numbers that were reported in the same article that you said to me, um, somebody's already spent upwards of half a million or nearly half a million dollars on lawyer fees so far. So right. far. And that's to this point. And you and I both know how slow court can go. So this thing could drag out into somebody could be added to the Forbes list just from this. OK. And yeah. so um, the reality is, if I'm the ACC, I'm excited by this. I'm saying, hey, listen. This is a big risk, but one way or the other, I'm one of those people that I don't like to meander over decisions long. I don't like to, you know, I like to, uh, I'm a big believer in study long, study wrong. You work with the best information you got. You collect all the information you get and go from there. Clemson is cutting down that time exponentially by saying, hey, make the judgment right now. We'd love if you make the judgment. Do we have to pay them to leave in terms of our TV rights? Can we take them with us or no? And if I was the ACC, I'm like, hey, I, I, too, would like to know, is there language in here that is not good language for us? Let us know right away so we can go back and adjust that language for the rest of the teams or whatever the case may be, as opposed to having to drag this out up until twenty middle 2025, maybe late 2025, early 2026 to find out the same result. No, let's get it over with. Let's get it over with. Uh, I, I, you know, played under the legendary Ryan Nielsen, and he used to say, uh, scrambling quarterbacks are bad for business, but I like to say, don't run. You'll just die tired. I would, if, if I'm the ACC, I'm the same way. I'm not running from this thing because I'm not trying to die tired and broke. What we're going to do is if you want to get this out the way, I want to get this out the way. Tell me, is there language? Is there not language? Because if there isn't language, then great. We can get that out the way right now. So you can know that your case has no legs right away, yeah. as opposed to us taking forever in a day to figure out the same thing. You brought up legal fees. Uh, we have access to some of those numbers because Matt Baker from the Tampa Bay Times was able to get some of those through public records requests. And Kenton, I don't know whose lawyers are better between Florida State's lawyers and Clemson's lawyers, but I can tell you Clemson got a much better deal. They, 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 must, have, they must have had a coupon or something because uh, according to Matt Baker, the hourly rates for Florida State's outside attorneys range from 550 to 985 dollars per hour. Clemson's uh hourly rates for their lawyers are $200 to 350 per hour. Uh but he does he does write though figures as high as 1700 are crossed out. I'm not sure what that means, but it, it sounds like uh Florida State's I, I don't know if they're twice as good as Clemson's lawyers, but they're they're twice as expensive. Well, Clemson's are working twice as fast cuz they ready to cut to the chase. <laughs> They said, listen, they ain't paying me enough. I'm doing this for the love of the game. Let's get to the conclusion of this thing right, right Florida away. State's lawyers are like, hey, if this has to take a couple more years, we're okay with that. Florida State's lawyers are like, these things take time, you know, <laughs> and we need to not be in such a rush to get out of this thing. You know, there are legal proceedings of a very peculiar nature going on, a very curious nature going on here. And I don't want to rush this and make a bad decision. Let's take our time. 
One motion a month maximum, okay? Let's take our time with this thing. Meanwhile, Clemson's lawyers are, hey, I'm on a highway to hell. Let's roll it. Let's roll it. Let's do it. We're going on the rails on a crazy train. We need to do it right now. <laughs> well, we got a lot more still to talk about because I don't think things are going to go this quickly, but there is there is a certain date near the end of the summer where I'm sure Clemson or Florida State would love to have some legal resolution. We'll talk about when that date is. I also want to talk about North Carolina. So UNC, they're not suing the ACC, but they did lawyer up before anyone else, and we'll talk about why that happened. You want to keep it locked right here, my friends. We are only getting started on this brand new episode of Locked on ACC. Folks, if you're a small business owner, you need to have LinkedIn jobs in your life. When you're hiring, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. Guys, I know this works. I have found jobs through LinkedIn jobs before. It's not just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else. Even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you so much for making this episode of Locked On ACC your first listen and your first watch today. Hey, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Uh, Alex Dono and Kenton Gibbs with you on this new episode of Locked on ACC. So uh, th this was uh, pretty illuminating from uh, from Matt Baker's article in the Tampa Bay Times. About, he, he wrote a, a piece that gives you general updates on Florida State and Clemson's lawsuits against the ACC, not to mention the ACC's lawsuits against them. But mm -hmm. he, he also talks about North Carolina. So um, FSU's contract actually began a month and a half after North Carolina hired a firm for a legal firm for quote unquote advice and counseling if as and when needed regarding commercial issues involving athletics. Baker writes, what exactly are those commercial issues? The school said, quote, nature and content of specific legal advice provided are privileged, not public. But after the Times requested legal contracts related to UNC's membership in the ACC, conference realignment and TV rights, the school provided the September 2022 retainer with the law firm Skadden, Arps, Slate, Meager, and Florm LLP. Flom LLP. The firm's sports work has included TV deals with the PGA Tour, sponsorship and broadcast rights with the LPGA, intellectual property protection, and trademark disputes. And it seems like what what prompted um, these schools with North Carolina actually doing it first, even though, again, they're not suing the ACC, at least not yet, was uh, it seems like a lot of eyes were open with what when it started happening with the Pac-12, when UCLA and USC declared they were going to the Big Ten. I think that's what prompted this handful of schools to start saying, hey, we at least need to explore the situation. And you know what? Kenton, I got no problem with that, right? Yeah. In, in fact, I, I feel like as an administration for any of these major universities, uh, it's it's really your obligation to try and make sure you're providing the best possible experience athletics-wise for the present and future, right? That you want to put your your university in the best position to succeed financially. Um, you know, I'd like to think you also want to have the best interests of your your quote unquote student athletes in mind, you know, when you think about what's going to be the best situation to put them in position to try and compete for championships and exceed great, uh, achieve greatness. So, you know, I, I think it is your duty as an administration member of any of these schools to make sure you're providing the best possible experience. Yeah, for sure. And, and, you know, with the whole UNC thing, it was a question of until you read deeper in, you're like, wait a minute, was this about 
the mishandling of funds thing, perhaps, mm. or the, the balancing of the budget thing that was going on there. But when you saw what the specifics of the law firm that they uh, hired were, we're into you're like oh okay this is clearly realignment and, and tv deal uh type of things but you know i don't have a problem with anybody using um you know using their and that another big part of this is all of the money that has been used was allegedly discretionary funds or funds that were put into athletics specifically by boosts and all that i don't have a problem with that i'm not one of those people that's like hey i don't want to see any money in the college because it's not money that was going into the college regardless the athletics departments were working as separate entities and collecting money and donations specifically for athletics. They weren't saying that's hey, an important note because, like, I, I'm a taxpayer in Florida. You're yeah. a taxpayer in North Carolina. Absolutely. I wanted to make sure, like, I hopefully they're not like spending tax money on the, which they're not doing. They're not. Yeah, they're not doing it. They're money. not doing it. And so, I, to me, that was the most important part. But also, seeing the UNC lawyer, I mean, you know, I I get it. I, it makes sense why they would, but obviously for reasons that have come out since then, UNC is not necessarily in the best position uh, to to make an exit from the conference, as well as some other things that are surrounding um, all of these situations in terms of what we're looking at for, um, in terms of what we're looking at for different teams um, by way of like, what situations are they going into by going into lawsuits? I feel like UNC's folks looked at it, they looked at all the information they had and said, hey, it doesn't make sense to go into lawsuits because going into lawsuits is a very is a very aggressive route. And we are all talking about a potential settlement or whatever the case may be. What is not discussed often because it's a very short possibility, it's, it'd be the shortest episode of Marvel's What If Ever, is what if these teams lose? What if Florida State and Clemson go to court and the judge says, I don't know what y'all were reading. This clearly says, if you want to leave, your rights stay here. You have no way around that. Congratulations for wasting your time and your money, but uh, congratulations to the lawyers. Y'all just got paid very handsomely. I'm sure some of you all will be driving new Mercedes Benzes. I hear G wagons are nice this time of year, so go for it. But you know that's that's something that needs to be discussed here because again, you know, it, it's never wrong to look into and inquire about: Am I getting the short end of the stick? Am I getting a deal that I could potentially get out of to get into a better one? There's never anything right. wrong with that. But we have to recognize that once you get to the point of lawsuit, you are not just tangentially, you are literally losing something fiscally. You are sacrificing something fiscally for your belief of a perceived gain that may not materialize. So, you know, this is one of those moments that, again, I'm not mad at anybody. I wouldn't be mad if I found out that more of our teams uh, purchase lawyers to look into these things. But realistically, all that matters at this point, in, in the words of Tony, or in the words of uh, one uh, Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange. We're in the end game now. Like that's that's where we are, you know. And and so all that matters at this point, what these cases shake out to be. Because if these cases shake out to be losses, then UNC looks like a a fellow North Carolina resident and J Cole who backed out of the beef early, and everybody's like, ah, good call. You were smart. You know, we all looked at you crazy for deleting your track, but that may be how UNC ends up looking at the end of this. If the ACC does prevail in their, uh, what is it, five current lawsuits or four, whatever yeah. the case may be, yeah, five because you include the yeah, the, the attorney AG, general yeah. in Florida, which she, she's having a tough time now because the the three other power conferences kind of joined the fight against her because they they don't want that ESPN TV deal to be made public. And I think you know one of the one of the fascinating things about the law is there's there's really no such thing as an ironclad contract. Right. I mean, there, there's always going to be right. nuances in the law. Like th th there's a reason why, you know, people from two different political parties care so much about Supreme Court justice appointments. Yeah. Right. I mean, if yeah. the law was the law, if it was black and white, you could say mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if the justice is uh, conservative or liberal. The law you interpret it the same way. It's just not how yeah. life is. Right. You can have two different sets of lawyers who can look at the same document and see it a different way. And it, like, it does seem like, you know, in the case of Florida State and Clemson, the directive that came, you know, to their legal teams were like, okay, we want to get out of this grant of rights. You're going to have to find a way to get us out. Like they, they didn't approach it. They, they had a certain conclusion in mind. They didn't really approach it from an objective standpoint where it's like, why don't you take a look at this thing? See if it's breakable. No, the, the directive was break it. We want to find a way to break it. And maybe they will, but it's a different approach where like the impression, the impression I got uh, hearing from Miami's athletic director a few months ago, 
um, was that, you know, they, they had their, cause a, a lot of ACE, the magnificent seven o- over a year ago, those seven schools within the ACC, they all examined the grant of rights. They had to go into that secret chamber, you know, with a chaperone to make sure they didn't take pictures of it or make copies of it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Miami was one of those schools that examined the grant of rights. And the impression that I got was, um, like they took a look at it. They, they didn't really feel like it was breakable that they really thought, okay, you know what? We're, we're probably stuck here. Right. Whereas, you know, Florida state and Clemson clearly had a different approach where it's like, we don't care what it says. We're going to break it. Out. We're going to yeah. find a way to break it. Get us out. Right. Yeah. And, it, and that's, I, you know, I may not be the greatest scientist that ever lived. I, I'm not a guy who dabbles too much in chemistry and all that. But I don't believe the scientific method is supposed to work at. We have a conclusion. Go prove it. You're supposed to start with a hypothesis and then test that and see whether or not like yeah, but science, things align science is different from the law, right? That's I mean, very true. That's very true. That's very true. And yeah. and you know, human nature is a social science, which you do yeah. sometimes see people go in and say, and even in social sciences, which I am a major in and all that. That's that's what I did. Yeah, you still shouldn't work from hey, we have a conclusion find a way, but it does happen. And this could be, yeah. and again, this is a situation where I understand the urge to do that, right? Because I, as much as I'm castigating that and saying, hey, that's a bad thing in general, if there were, you know, what is the gap? They say the gap is going to be $30 million per year over the course of 10 years. If there was $300 million in my life over on the line, you damn right I'd be starting at the conclusion that I deserve a $300 million. Let's find a way to get me a two. So I'm not going to sit up here and pretend like I'm holier than thou and, and I don't. And, and, and also, what, and I see it from like Florida State side because, okay, so F- Florida State looks at it and says, okay, hold on. Vanderbilt is yeah. guaranteed yeah. 30 million more per year. Like, Va- Vander, like, does Vanderbilt really deserve an automatic 30 million more per season than we get just because they were lucky enough to already be in the SEC? where we're in the ACC. So I, I, I totally understand it. Like the, the revenue gap, if you're a member of the ACC and you feel like you're, you're just as good or better than some of the brands that are in the power too, why should yeah. they automatically be making more than us? I, and I get that. And I get that. That's why I, I, like I said just a second ago, I'm not going to pretend like if there was that much money on the line for me, I wouldn't care either. I just think that this is, this is going to be, this is going to be a moment where we see, you know, how how does this thing shake out? And honestly, even after it shakes out, how long will it take for the appeals and the appeals to the appeals and all that? How long will it take for all that to play out? And will, while that's playing out, will they be playing under a restraining order to where they have to stay in the ACC and the ACC will have to back pay them money for any time that they spent outside of whatever conference they were going to be in or Will it be that they're stuck in the ACC and that even if they do get out on an appeal or, or some backdoor channel, they're like, oh, you're still SOL for the money that you uh, didn't make otherwise. But, you know, it, it's this is a very, very interesting case that I feel like is going to take a lot of turns, but it's going to be very slow and it's going to be very plotting. But, you know, I enjoy folks like Clemson who are like, hey, I know what Ken's talking about in all this time. No, we want the Judge Judy style of court. Bring me the ruling now. Yeah. Bring it within the next 30 minutes. J.G. Wentworth, it's my money, and I need it now type of deal. I love to see it. Well, you know what I love? I love the fact that college baseball is going to help us shorten a very, very long summer coming mm-hmm. up, heading into the Super Regionals. What kind of representation does the ACC have? We'll talk about it when we come back. Keep it locked right here on this brand-new episode of Locked on ACC. And I already know, my friends, you are keeping it locked to FanDuel because we're winning money this summer. We're having a great time. Um, I, I've been getting through this month of May. Well, we're in June now, aren't we? Oh, man, I'm getting through May and June with my Florida Panthers money line bets. Is there? They punched their ticket to the Stanley Cup Finals. It is winner take all time in the NBA and NHL. FanDuel's giving you a shot, a shot to bring home a big win of your own right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book.
I am Alex Dono from Locked On Canes. He is Kenton Gibbs from Locked On Wolfpack. Thank you so much for making Locked On ACC your first listen and your first watch today. By the way, smash that like button. If you're watching us on YouTube, smash that thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. If you listen to the audio version, make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your pods. All right, so Kent, how, heading into the Super Regionals on the road to Omaha, how's the ACC looking? Who's still in it in college baseball? Well, the ACC is doing fine besides some of our top guns, you know, making some fairly disappointing exits. You know, I, as much as I'd love to make fun of Wake Forest for them making fun of certain other schools in the conference for uh, losing to VCU and whatnot, and them getting put out by VCU later in the season, yikes, greatest this you of all time, maybe, but – so far, we have four, potentially five teams that are headed to the Super Regionals. The teams that have already punched their tickets at the time of this recording, there are the Clemson Tigers and the Florida State Seminoles. So both of the lawsuit babies going wow. to the baseball <laughs> equivalent of the Sweet 16. How's the commish, Jim Phillips, feel about that? He can't be too happy. You know, don't worry. We, we're going to put in a call to him, see what our sources, uh, we can get a get some type of word out of the ACC's office. And the other two are NC State and UVA. Those are the ones that are confirmed. And at the time of this recording, uh, UNC and LSU are in the bottom of the eighth with LSU up three runs to two. So that game has not reached its conclusion yet, but it is all, it's getting near dawn for the uh, Diamond Hills as they like to call themselves. So, you know, we're, we're looking at four, potentially five, but it, it's looking like we may end up with four teams. Again, the Super Regionals are the equivalent to the Sweet 16 right. for baseball. That is the first time that you get a guaranteed series uh, between two teams, and that's it in terms of, like, who moves forward and all that because we all know that the first round, the Regionals are much more of a round-robin type deal where it's a loser's bracket, win the bracket, all that type of stuff. You don't see that same uh, situation necessarily with, the super regionals to the same degree, at least. So that's, that's where we are at right now. We got four teams guaranteed locked in at the time of this. It could be five with a little bit of late game heroics by the diamond Hills, but we shall see. All right. Well, consider me a bandwagon Wolfpack fan for the rest of the way. Uh, they, they, I, I'd, li I'd like to see the pack. They just had the final four run in basketball. Maybe they can make a college world series run, put something together. So, you I'll know, up to the pack. Avid's been coaching for forever and a day. He's been coaching since, you know, before you hit puberty, since before I was even alive uh, at NC State. And and yet, you know, he's still – he's an ACC championship and a national championship has eluded him. Granted, one year, some people say that it didn't elude him. It was snatched away from him by some COVID protocols. Oh, and we yeah. are going to discuss that. Yeah. Uh, we have gotten over that. We haven't gotten over that. I'm a liar. But, you know, we're going to see how this thing shakes out. I'm honestly – I'm rooting for everybody ACC. I'm rooting for everybody ACC. I'd love it. I'd love it for – I'd love for it to be my pack, hoisting that trophy and getting Avon what he's been so close to, what he was so close he could taste but could never quite get for all these years. But, you know, I, I'd be happy if any ACC team wins it, except for the one that's uh, trailing right now. But any other ACC team, I'm rooting for you. I believe in you. You can do it. Well, we're going to have fun on tomorrow's episode as well. So – um uh, and I love Athlon Sports puts puts this out every year. In fact, I, I had accidentally sent Kenton a ten year old version of this story uh, <laughs> earlier today, and he, he thought I was crazy. Like that, Donna. This is it was from like it was fourteen. It was from twenty twelve. There is an updated yeah. version heading into the twenty twenty four season. Athlon puts this out every year. ACC football coaches speak anonymously about their conference rivals, so you get. Um, the gloves are off. You get a very brutally honest quotes about all the teams that they coach against. What are they saying about Florida State and NC State and Clemson and Miami and UNC and so on? Uh, we're going to talk about that on tomorrow's episode. So, yeah, we will see you guys then on another episode of Locked On ACC, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.